AMT's 1966 Buick Modified Stalker. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, race fans. Are you ready to join me back on the oval track as we unbox this amazing AMT Ertl 1966 Buick Modified Stalker? Well, of course you are, because last week you got to see the 1965 Oldsmobile Modder Modified Stalker, and you want to continue this great series. But don't forget, I also did the 35 Chevy and a 34 Ford, which I will be proudly displayed in the winner's circle at the end of this video so that you can click on those links and check out those great videos. So now, without further ado, let's pay our entry fee by clicking like, subscribe and sharing this video with all our friends and family pounding that notification bell as our stamp to get into the turnstile gates and we need the attendance of 100 likes to make this great a great racing season so now without further ado let us join ourselves down in the pits as we open up the lid on this and get it ready for racing and now, race fans, we return once again to our dirt track as we take a look at our 1966 Buick Modified Stalker by AMT Ertl under the old RC2 label. Now, this kit is my fourth model kit in this Street Stock and Strip series. Of course, we had our 1934 Ford, our 1935 Chevrolet, the 1965 Oldsmobile, and now, last but not least, our 1966 Buick Modified Stalker. Now, these Modified Stalker series originally came out in the 1968-1969 AMT calendar year, the original AMT. And these cars were popular back in the day, as racing was all the rage in the 60s. So, when these model kits came out, they were part of a series, and when RC2 re-released them, they only released four out of that original series. So now here we have our box, and I do believe it doesn't quite say yet, so maybe like in the last Oldsmobile review, I actually found on the bottom of the chassis it was molded in which car this was. So I do believe just looking at this, that this is the Buick Grand Sport, the GS, for the year. Although, we will see as we open this thing up if I'm correct or not. So anyway, we turn the box over to the side, and again we can see some great pictures of the model kit. This, of course, is the cover picture. And then in this panel here, I'll just zoom in if you don't mind. There we go. You can see we have the engine bay and our interior through the passenger side window or the driver's side maybe and then we have our rear three-quarter shot of the car with the 8 for of course our Buick V8. Now let's back this back out again so that I can turn the box up this way and you see on this side of course is the same as the front and here we get our kit part number, 38534, and our barcode. And then if we turn it down to this side, we can see that this kit, again, came out in 2006, just like the other four in that series. And we have a sponsorship by GM and Goodyear. And then we get into our skill box. So right here, we have that this is a skill level 2, which is moderate for ages 10 and up, requires glue and paint. And, of course, the other end of the box is, uh, of course, the same as the front. So we'll just turn this thing over. And I'm going to take the lid off. There we go. Let's get this out of the way. And now we can see inside our box. We will look at the instructions in just a minute. So I'm going to move this to the side. Here's our decal sheet, which I'm going to keep covered to the end, so if you want to see what this looks like, stay tuned to the end of the video. And we'll just get that there. I'm showing you guys how they packaged this thing originally. So we have our chrome in a nice plastic bag, which keeps it from scratching up in the model. Move that over there. Here is our body. And RC2 was kind enough to put in this piece of cardboard. Because the way they had this in here, right, if this gets pushed into the side, 
it could crush this. So they put this piece of cardboard in between the roof and the front pillars here for our windshield so that it wouldn't crush down the top of the roof. Moving the body off to the side, we have our bag here with the tires in it. And these are much the same as the modified stalker tires in our Oldsmobile kit. Very deep. Very deep, man. <laughs> okay, just thought I'd add that in. So then we have our final bag here with all our gray components. And you notice something different? In the Oldsmobile, they had this chassis mounted onto a piece of cardboard to keep it from damage. Here it is mounted not mounted it's in the bag so that's our final piece that was not you know set up the same way as last time so I'm just gonna put these components back into the box for a minute and then keeping the deck hall sheet covered for our mystery <laughs> put our instructions back in we will take a look at the instructions next now our instructions again are the fold out big page style. So I will have to zoom in on the individual panels in just a minute. But as we can see here, this is a reproduction of the original instruction sheet, which would have come out again in like 1969, 68, 69. And again, it has this type of Star Trek lettering that was popular back in the day. And we can see down here, RC2 has their logo on there. So let's take a look at this panel by panel. So I'll just zoom in again here, move it around a little. Okay. So here we have, <laughs> here we have step number one. We have our engine assembly. And now this is supposed to be the Buick 401 the nail head engine could also be a 400 um, but i will give a little bit of a hint away on the instruction sheet they're talking about a buick 455 so that would be a larger type of wildcat motor or whatever that would have come out a little bit later or actually have been in the bigger buicks at the time this of course is a buick skylark gs grand sport so at any rate we do have the nail head because the way the valve covers are located on our cylinder heads they are straight up and down as opposed to being angled with the top of the cylinder heads so here we have our stock air cleaner and our stock four barrel carburetor including our intake manifold we have our front engine cover here with a pulley assembly the fan going in there and the alternator coming up on here with our power steering pump sitting here so this is a uh, pretty factory type motor. We have our oil pan and our oil filter coming up under here. The exhaust headers which are going on to our cylinder heads and our valve covers dropping on the cylinder heads. So there would be of course these ones going on over here but just for clarity of the image they do not put them on. And then underneath here we have our wheel assembly and much like our Oldsmobile from 65 that we reviewed last week Again, we have these big monstrous tires, and they call out for putting in your own tread pattern on here if you are racing on the dirt, or for paved track, just sand your tires. Okay, now let's take a look at step number three, which is the chassis. And again, this Buick is like our Oldsmobile. Although you do glue a cross member in between your front suspension, your front A-arms, lower A-arms, and drop the engine in onto the flat panel chassis. You have your two metal axles and your assembled wheels going on there, and your exhaust hitters are going to pop up underneath here once you've got it all together. And here we have our interior. Now this is a little bit different from the way they did the Oldsmobile. And I'll show you in just a minute. This is the first step of our interior. So we have again our racing seat with the four seatbelt harness going right into the floorboards. And then we have a shift plate and our shifter level lever. Sorry, so that's two pieces, as well as our steering wheel and our instrument panel. And if you see here, we've got the little clips again. So this 
might have been taken from a mold, modified mold, of a promotional car back in the day, promotional model kit. So just so you guys know, it is a peg and post style car, which if you've been watching these videos, you know what a peg and post is, because I'm always referring to it as that. So here's the second part of our interior. Once the first part is all down, this of course is the roll cage going in, all padded for the protection of the driver. So we've got crossover braces and side braces, a center brace, the other, the passenger side, driver side brace, pardon me, and the rear angled bracket there, or brace. Now one thing that's different from the Oldsmobile is that the Oldsmobile had the aluminum panels going up behind the seat and all the way across. This kit does not have that, at least in the instructions here. So now we get into our body components. We have our interior shell dropping in onto those posts there. And then we have our posts in the back and the front. So again, just like the promotional models of the day, you would screw the chassis onto the body in that way. So there we've got our battery going on to our front radiator support wall and our firewall going into these notches here, which should come up touching, you know, the front of our assembled interior. And of course we just get one front windshield for the lightweight bracing. And then here on the back are the final assemblies. Now there's our GS style hood with the vents in there. This is of course a stock hood. It doesn't have the hood pins like the Oldsmobile did. You got your outside mirrors, the side braces for if you're going around the track and you spin out and you get T-boned. Then here we have our front bumper brace and of course our front bumper and grill. And note that the quad headlights have been blanked out by these metal plates. And then we just push our instructions here to get to the back panel. So there we have our official license, Goodyear and GM. Uh, here's our rear bumper brace going onto the back bumper and the bumper just popping onto there. And of course we don't have any taillights, so these would be blanked out with pieces of aluminum again, just like on the real race cars. So now we get into our gray components and we start off with, of course, the body, the biggest thing we've got here in the entire kit. Now keep in mind that this kit would have all the chrome removed because again, this is a modified stalker designed for the street. I guess I'll have to hold it this way <laughs> or zoom back a little more. There we go. There we go. Okay. so. Here, of course, we have all our trim removed. Although, actually, if you look at it, there's still a little bit of trim down at the bottom here. So this kit may not have been as fully uh, racified as some of the other, other kits in this series. However, uh, it is still pretty blank. There's no door handles on the door, for example, which would be removed because of weight and covered over for aerodynamics. We do have the trunk line cut in as well as our door line panels and of course we still have the vent right here along that part of the body. <laughs> Again we have our peg and post with our radiator, radiator support wall here and into the back again and these are pretty deep tubes. So you could mount this onto a slot car chassis if you wanted to race this in your slot car league. Then we have the little groove here for our firewall where that would mount. There is no headliner panel in here, the same as the 68 Oldsmobile did not have one. One thing that's cool about these Buicks is they had this tunneled roof, which was a, a neat feature for the time. And there are no Buick letters or anything on here. 
Now, one thing I wanted to uh, show you, but I, I made a discovery here that I don't like. <laughs> Here's our hood, and this still has the chrome vents on there, which is nice, as well as the chrome strip that goes in there. It does have hood pins, which uh, were not drawn in the illustration, but the thing that that I'm upset with is one of my hood hinges broke here, broke right off. In fact, there it is there. <laughs> So, I know I won't be able to put that back on because it'll just uh, break off again. So anyway, turning the hood over, you can see the mold marks. But again, these are raised, so they're easy to get rid of with the hobby file or your number 16 hobby blade. There's a little bit of the fireproof matting in here, in between the braces. So again, it's got its detail, but it's not quite perfect. Now, what I wanted to show was the fit and finish of the hood. And as you can see, it is going to be quite a nice tight fit into there. Oops. So now I'm going to put this to the side and we'll take a look at it in a few minutes here. But anyway, that should finish off our examination of our Buick Skylark GS body. All right. So since we just looked at it, we might as well continue with it. I won't talk about the hood if you don't. <laughs> Now, this is interesting. Here we've got four wheel backs, but these are for stock Buick wheels. And here we've got one of the front bumper braces and our four-point harness bucket race seat. So again, if we turn this over, you will see the mold marks on the bottom of the seat, which can easily be removed by a file. But you see one is up and one is sunken, so you're going to have to use putty in the sunken one. And uh, you might have to do that a few times to make sure your putty is not low. <laughs> so now we have the chassis of our Buick Skylark GS sitting here. And as you can see, it's really been simplified for this race edition. In fact, there's no detail in these underneath panels here, the interior panels. Uh, there we have our front suspension. And as you can see here, these holes again would be for our screw mounted promotional style model kit. The only real de detail on here is on the gas can, or the, the gas tank, pardon me. There are some little rivets that are barely visible sitting on there. Our Buick rear axle is just molded in as one piece, so you can see some of the arms in there. But yeah, really basic. And if you turn it over, of course, you uh, get your posts in there for a peg and post. And now, remember I was saying I didn't know if it was a Skylark or not? It actually says right in here, Buick Skylark used under license. So yeah, we can see that that's the way that is. And a bit of flash again, so you're going to have to clean that up with your hobby knives and sandpaper. Now here we have our sprue with our wheels. These are the wheel fronts and wheel backs. And uh, here again we have a six bolt wheel pattern so that you get the extra pressure onto holding our wheels onto our brake drums. And these are our wheel backs. And as you can see, they have the, the shaft for the metal axles to go into. They are quite deep. In fact, very deep. So you can imagine the thickness of the tires going through here. All right, so now here we have the Buick 455, or the 401 cubic inch nail head. And uh, it's not really too clear as to which is which. Uh, but anyway, it looks like here we have a standard transmission. And we've got our air cleaner sitting here, as well as our cylinder heads. The oil pan, which is shortened because this is, again, with the metal axles going through the bottom of the engine block. And then we've got our distributor and some of the other components under here for our engine. Now, what's in this kit that's not in the instructions are these carburetors here and this intake manifold that also has injectors, chrome injectors. And here we've got our regular Buick intake for the single barrel carburetor and our single air cleaner, as well as our belt and pulley system here. And there's our battery. And again, you'll notice we've got two different types of headers here. These long ones, and then what looks to be the stock-style Buick uh, 
exhaust manifolds. So if you guys have built this kit in the past and know what this one is from with the extra carburetors and whatnot, please let us know in the comment section down below which kit that was and what it was. <laughs>
at the front of the oil pan. Then here we've got our firewall, and this again is not a racing firewall. This is a proper Buick uh, stock Skyline um, firewall. It's got our brake master cylinder and our heater blower assembly. Now this little piece, I'm not quite sure what it is, like from the instruction point of view, but it does look like it's supposed to be a custom part to go into the rear bumper. Um, it's got that Buick W shape in there. These are the pins to glue the body together on. I'm not sure what this little guy is. Oh, that's our shift lever thing. I thought that would have been chrome, but it's gray. See, there's our, our body pegs. These are supposed to be like the little screws, so they would push in through those holes and up into the peg and post part of our um, body to chassis assembly. And then on the back here, we do have a couple of those mold marks, which again could be filed out of there. They may not need to be, but you're going to have to check that on the finished, or when you're putting the model together, to see if these are causing an interference between the interior bucket, front of the interior bucket, and the firewall itself. So it may have to be sanded smooth. There is some texture on here as well. And of course, all our electronic wires and everything else. Oh, and there's our little fuse box thing there too. <laughs> so anyway, that is that component. All right, now we get into my favorite part of all the model kits, which is the chrome, just because it's all nice and shiny. So here we have our Buick Grand Sport front grille with, of course, the headlights blanked out with these chrome panels here, or aluminum panels, I should say. And to get the nice dark grill in here, uh, you can easily use some Citadel black wash. Just lay it in there and wipe it off. Some Nuln oil is what it's called. And uh, then here we've got our rear bumper. And again, the tail lights are blanked off with those metal plates for racing. And yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry. Then we have our um, valve covers down here for the Buick nail head, as well as our fan, which is chrome plated. And now here we've got, which weren't in the instructions, of course, these injectors. Nice chrome solid injectors here for, um, you know, getting air into the car. Then we've got our chrome gear shift lever sitting in here, as well as our side mirror. And then here, which is interesting, we've got these promotional style Buick wheels that are here. And these are, of course, five bolt pattern mag wheels that Buick had, which are accurate to Buick. But if you look at these, you'll notice they've got a big hole here for your axle to go in. And then they have these little ribbed necks here. And that, of course, is for the promotional style solid rubber tire would be um, big on one side and then have an indentation in the back for this to fit through and a tiny hole here for that to go through. So these wheels don't really fit our, um, you know, our racing Buick here, but you can always keep these in your parts box for use if you're restoring a promotional model kit or want a different look for something. And remember I had those wheel backs that were really narrow? Those would glue onto here as well. So pretty cool. And now if we just take a look at this up close, you of course can see that there's a mesh on these grills for your headlights. So that could be possibly an air intake kind of mesh or just just a detail. And uh, same with on the back with the taillights or where the taillights used to be. But overall, there is some good detailing on these chrome pieces, even though it's not quite enough for my customizing standards.
And now in this model kit we only have one piece of glass, much like our 65 Oldsmobile modified stalker. And this one here is just the one piece. There is a bit of a tag here which we'll have to saw off. I'm leaving it in the plastic bag just to protect it from scratches in the future. But really it's just a piece of glass. There's not much to be said other than you could almost use these as sun visors. Now here's our tires again. And much like the other modified stalker kit, the 65 Oldsmobile, these are pretty much the exact same tires. They are big, wide Goodyears, and they don't give us any other information on the sidewall. And uh, so we've got the four tires here. These are the tire inserts that go into the back. And we've got two metal axles. So let's just take a look at one of these tires a little closer. If you know it up here. It does say Goodyear right around there, and like I was saying, there are no other definitions. They are sunken in at the back, and the insert will go in just like this. And then the instructions say to either sand this off for a black top, or to um, take a hobby saw and saw in some angled lines in here so sort of like this and then you can go across this way so that you get a tread pattern in there and these are quite nice tires very wide slicks you can see and all four of them are the same size so really you get <laughs> this if you have them all together but yeah lots of good handling on the track and those are the tires. And now we come to the part of the video where we get to reveal our decal sheet. And now I'll just take off the yellow paper and we can see the beauty of these amazing decals from RC2. And now we've got the red and black outline, but this time the outline is more of a drop shadow in here to give it a little better 3D depth on your model kit. There's some beautiful pinstriping going on here on these flying eights. You can have Greg as your driver, or Scooter, or Keith. Uh, we've got Quonset Speed Shop this time around. And again, this L, double L on the orange and black. We have some nice AMT Ertl Round 2 style decals that you can put anywhere on your car as sponsors. Then we have Buick, Goodyear for our tires. And what's this say here? We've got Brainy's paint and oh Brian's paint and pinstripe right there. See here's our 455 cubic inch decals. So if that's the indication of the motor, there you go. We've got Johnson again, which I don't quite know who that is. And here we have Ron's. So if you know some of these sponsors, let us know in the comments below and who they're hooked up to. And now I'm just going to lift this up into the camera here just to get a better detail. There's our flying eight. And of course we've got the numbers from one to zero so you can have any number combination you want if you don't want the flying eights. And then there's our other names, Keith, Scooter, Greg. That's for both sides on the roof or on the by the doors there actually. And there's your Buick and Quonset Speed Shop and Brian's paint and pinstripe, which could also go on to some, uh, some of the 53 Ford trucks on the doors if you wanted, or a station wagon or anything. And uh, that's our decals. So let us know in the comments below which one of these great decal sheets that you like, be it the 34 Ford, the 35 Chevy, the 64 Oldsmobile or the, sorry, the 65 Oldsmobile or the 66 Buick here. And that completes our look at the Street Stock and Strip 1966 Buick Modified Stalker by AMT RC2. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing video of the 1966 Buick Modified Stalker and hopefully it can beat the Oldsmobile, Chev and Ford down there on the track. 
you will have to build it and you will have to decide who wins this amazing race trophy. So before we leave the auditorium, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell as your exit stamp for leaving the stadium. And let's go back to our 100 likes where we can relax after this amazing race. And until next time, see you at the track again.